guys, welcome to Crypto Nama, where we are going to tell you everything and everything about the new crypto law introduced in Budget 2022. Stay tuned to gain more clarity. Hello and welcome. I'm Jyoti Arora, tax expert at Clear. We are India's largest tax and financial services platform for individuals. Do subscribe to our channel to support us and get clear explanations for finance and taxation concepts. So let's get started. Today, more than 1500 virtual currencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Ripple, Matic, etc. are traded in the digital currency world. The investment and trading volume of cryptocurrencies has increased multifold since the nationwide lockdown. In the Union Budget 2022, our Finance Minister introduced tax on the virtual digital asset such as cryptocurrency and the News has made rounds uh, around this in the internet, right? Additionally, it was also announced that the Reserve Bank of India is working towards an issuance of a digital rupee using this blockchain technology. But in this video, we are going to see what the new crypto law talks about. So stay tuned. So firstly, we will see the definition of the virtual digital assets covered in the Finance Bill 2022. So, Finance Bill defines it in a technical way. Let's try to understand it. It is a code or token, uh, not being Indian currency or any foreign currency, generated through cryptographic means. Now, cryptography basically means code used to communicate in a very encrypted manner, that is, in a more secure manner. So, it covers any code which is generated using this cryptography technology. Next, they have covered uh, under this definition is any code or token which has a digital representation of a value exchanged. It also covers a code or a token which has an inherent value or functions as a store of value and is used in any financial transactions or for the purpose of investment. However, it is not limited to any investment scheme and uh, it can be transferred, stored or traded electronically. Next, the definition says that virtual digital asset also includes non-fungible tokens, NFTs and any other tokens of similar nature. Last but not the least, it would also include any other digital asset notified by our central government in the official gazette. So with this last line, they have made it open that any digital asset which the government considers as virtual digital asset will be included in the definition. Also, the government has the power to include or exclude any digital asset from this definition of VDAs, that is virtual digital asset, subject to specified conditions. So now the act says that the taxes to be paid on the transfer of VDAs. The budget has not specifically defined what transfer means in respect of VDAs, but if we see the meaning of transfer defined under the capital asset provisions of the Income Tax Act, then it includes any sale, exchange, relinquishment of rights, compulsory acquisition under any law or any conversion of the asset. So in the Income Tax Act, it is not just sale which is covered for taxability. Transfer of asset in any form will be covered under the purview of the taxation. Taking this view, it is believed that all types of transfers will attract the tax liability of the new crypto tax and not just sale unless it is clarified otherwise by the government. So for example, any gift in the form of crypto, any crypto received while winning a game or any airdrop like the free crypto coins received in the wallet will also be taxable unless government comes and clarifies it otherwise. Now, Budget 2022 has further introduced a new section 115 BBH that levies a tax on income from the transfer of virtual digital assets. As per the section, if the taxpayer's total income includes income from transfer of such virtual digital assets, then the taxpayer is liable to pay 30% tax on the income from the virtual digital assets. So the crypto income will be taxed effective from 1st of April 2022, which means that the taxpayers need to think about the advanced taxes for the coming financial year that is 2022-23. 
So where the income of the taxpayer includes any income from the transfer of virtual digital asset, then the income tax will be payable. That is the total liability will be aggregate of the tax liability calculated on crypto income and the tax liability calculated on other income. So first you have to calculate the tax on crypto income at flat 30% as per the prescribed rules, we'll discuss that later on and then calculate the tax on the other income as per the Income Tax Act. The total of this tax will be your liability of the year. Now, crypto income is to be calculated by reducing cost of acquisition from the transfer value. Remember, no expense or deduction is allowed from this income except the cost of acquisition. So uh, let us see what are the points to be remembered while calculating crypto income. First is no deduction is allowed for expenses and then only cost of acquisition can be deducted from the crypto income. Let us understand this through an example. Suppose you have purchased Bitcoin units worth rupees 1 lakh and sold them for rupees 2 lakh and say you have incurred rupees 10,000 as expense to earn this income like you have incurred exchange fees, interest paid on borrowed capital, electricity charges, etc. So you will have to pay now 30% tax on the sale value less cost of acquisition that is rupees 2 lakh minus rupees 1 lakh. So that is your net profits is 1 lakh. So 30% tax liability will be 30,000 you have to pay as tax and you won't get any deduction for expenditure incurred to earn this crypto income. Hope now you clearly understand how to calculate the tax on crypto income. If yes, then please type clear in the comment section below. So the budget 2022 has laid down that no set off of any loss is allowed from the crypto gains, which means that you cannot set off loss from crypto with any other head of income. Hence, gains from sale of equity, mutual funds, properties, or etc. and salary income, business income, etc. cannot be used for set off of loss from the crypto. This is clear, right? Now the next question may arise as to whether loss from one crypto will be allowed as set off from the gain of another crypto. For example, like Bitcoin loss with Ethereum income and vice versa. Now, this is a gray area. We believe that such a set off must be allowed, but it is not yet clarified. Also, the way the law has been worded, it shows that the government intends to link such income to that from gambling, horse racing, crosswords or lotteries and in such incomes no law set off is allowed and a flat rate of 30% tax is levied. More clarity is required on this aspect from the government authorities and we'll keep you posted once we receive such clarity. Now talking about the carry forward provisions which means that the Income Tax Act allows unabsorbed losses to be taken to the subsequent years for set off but in case of virtual digital assets the law clearly states that one cannot carry forward losses from virtual digital assets it means if you have incurred any loss from cryptocurrencies in one financial year you cannot carry forward such loss to the next financial year for set off now for tracing the transaction of virtual digital asset the government has inserted a new provision that is section 194s for deduction of TDS at 1% by transferee or buyer at the time of payment of any consideration for the transfer of VDA or virtual digital asset. Now the new TDS clause for VDA states that TDS has to be deducted if the aggregate value of the transfer of virtual digital asset is more than rupees 10,000 during the relevant financial year. However, if individual or HUF makes the payment like is a buyer, but does not have any income uh, from business and profession during the previous year or if such individual or HUF has any income from business but such income is not more than rupees 1 crore during the previous financial year or if such individual or HUF has income from the profession but the gross receipts are not more than rupees 50 lakh during the previous financial year then the TDS by such person will require to be deducted only if the total value of transfer of virtual digital asset is more than rupees 50,000 during that previous year. Now, what uh, happens when the payment is made in kind? So, uh, for example, the payment is made in exchange of another asset or service or any other value, then the government has clarified that if the person makes a payment first, which is wholly in kind, for the exchange of another virtual digital asset that is no payment 
is made in cash or second is partly in cash or partly in kind but the part payment made in cash is not enough to deduct the tds in respect of the whole transaction then such person is responsible for deducting tds uh, must ensure that the tax is paid for consideration of transfer of the virtual digital asset so now the responsibility is with the buyer that even if you uh, receive any payment in kind you will have to make sure that the tax is de uh, deposited to the government's treasury now the finance minister has proposed to tax the recipient of the uh, virtual digital assets in the form of gifts however the finance bill 2022 does not provide any additional details regarding ifs and buts of the tax levied on the cryptocurrency gift but uh, it is logical to assume that the gifts in the form of cryptocurrency will attract similar rules of taxation as any other gift under the income tax act so if we apply the same rules then the person receiving virtual digital asset as gift will be taxable if the person receives the vda without any consideration and the aggregate value of the fmv that is fair market value of such virtual digital asset exceed rupees 50000 the whole of the aggregate of fmv of such asset will be taxed under the head income from other sources now if the consideration received is less than the aggregate fmv of the property and the uh fmv exceeds rupees 50000 then the aggregate fmv of such vda that exceeds the amount of consideration received will be taxable under the head of income from other sources however there is an exception to the existing rule of gift taxation which says that if any gift is received from spouse brother sister or any lineal ascendant or descendant your parents your grandparents incl are included in lineal ascendant and your descendant means your children and grandchildren so if you receive any gifts from these specified relatives then it is not taxable now this is the existing rule and in absence of any clarity from from the government we will assume and we'll go by these rules only even for the taxation of virtual digital assets for example suppose miss alisha has received a digital asset of rupees 70000 in gifts in financial year 2022 23 then she must show such an amount under the head income from other sources and pay tax on the same however in the given situation if miss alisha has paid rupees 20000 as consideration for digital asset worth rupees 70000 that is uh, the payment is less than the fmv then she, she would have to pay the tax on the balance uh, that is which is 50000 so folks that was all about the new tax law on virtual digital assets such as cryptocurrency if there is any query related to crypto or income tax then please comment below we will reply to it as soon as we can and i hope this video was helpful also we have a separate video of the top 20 faqs about the crypto tax law and it covers all the practical aspects so you can just go and check it out and all your doubts uh, and specifically the practical doubts of how the tax will be applicable will get cleared thank you for watching this video subscribe to our channel for more such updates take care and goodbye